Martin Brooks Bank and I'm here to tell you about blending and warping using the Kramer range of scalars such as VP792, 793 and 794. Here we have the curved CinemaScope screen. This screen is 2.38 aspect ratio as we get in a movie theatre or cinema. And we blended and warped two YUXGA projectors together to create a single continuous image. We've used the warping to create the image for the curvature of the screen and also to align the left and right projectors. And we've used the edge blending so that the image appears seamless and a single image on the screen. We're now going to show you how to do a blend and warp setup using two VP793s so that you can set up blending and warping yourself in your own installations. For those of you who are new to blending and haven't seen this before, this single image, as I explained, is made from two projectors. And just to show you what's going on, if I cover the lens of one of the projectors, you can see that the projector on that side is generating a little bit over half the image and the image tails off or fades out to my side of the screen. If I then walk across and cover the other projector lens, you'll see that that projector is making the left-hand side of the image to the centre and again is tailing off across the screen. But when they are both shown together, they appear as a single continuous image. So we're going to start setting up the two VP793s which are driving these two projectors here onto this curved screen. As you can see at present, we're not set up at all. We just have test patterns displayed. We're just showing the default test patterns. Geometrically, the picture is wrong, and it's not blending together. There are very clearly two different images here which aren't aligned and aren't set up at all. So, we're going to take you through how to set this up. And my colleague Mark sat here is going to drive the boxes while I talk you through what we're doing. So, first of all, to set up the VP793s, we actually have to set up the projectors first. It's quite important if you're using projectors for blending that anything that the projector might be doing to the image is disabled. Typically things like any kind of dynamic range boosting, colour boosting, special gamma settings or anything like that need to be turned off on the projector so that the projector is operating in its native mode. So be sure to turn off things like dynamic colour or dynamic contrast or anything like that because otherwise you won't get good blend results. Make sure that it's the scalers that are doing all the work, not the projectors. So the projectors are just acting as boxes which give out light. So first of all, after we've done that on the scalers, on the VP793s, we have to set up the native resolution of the scalar output to match the native resolution of the projectors to make sure the projectors aren't scaling. In this particular case, the projectors we're using are a wide UXGA or 1920 by 1200 projectors. So first of all, in the scaler, you'll see the on-screen menu appear. We're going to go to the output menu for the left scaler, to the display, and we're going to set the output mode, and we're going to pick 1900 by 1200, which we've done. The picture will restart and the projector will relock in its native mode. And now we have to confirm the output resolution change, which we've done. Now we need to do it on the right picture as well. So again, we're going to go to the output menu, go to display type, go to output mode. That, in fact, was already in the right mode already, which saved us a little bit of work. So that's the first thing. We've made sure the scalers are driving the projectors at their native mode. That's very important the projectors must not be processing the signal, so the scalers must give the projectors native mode. The next thing we have to do is set up the scalers so that they know they're blending at all, and to tell the scalers how many projectors we have in our array of projectors and where each scaler is driving in that array. Now we can drive an array of up to four projectors wide and four projectors tall. That's 16 projectors in total and 16 scalers, and that's a very, very big display. For this demonstration, we've only got two projectors, so we're two wide, one tall. So we're going to go into the multiple unit mode, which is where we define how many projectors we have. So, first of all, we're going to set this so that it's two units wide. That has the effect of turning on edge blending. We then have to make sure that the scaler is correctly set for where it is in the array. So we're two units wide, 
one high and we are at horizontal position zero, which is correct with a left hand projector. Now we have to go and do the right hand scaler to suit the right hand projector. So back to multiple unit mode again. This is already on two units wide, but we have to tell it uh, it is in a horizontal position one in the array. So this now knows it's doing the right hand side of the picture. Okay. Now one of these scalars has auto zoom on, and one has auto zoom off. Just let me tell you about that. So auto zoom is where the scaler knows which part of the input content it has to take based on the array size, where it is in the array, and what the blend widths are set to. If you're using one source through a splitter, such as a Kramer DVI or HDMI splitter, so drive the same source into both projectors, so both scalers and both projectors, as we're doing now, then auto zoom should be on. If, however, you're in a situation where you have sources or content which has been pre-cut into separate parts, perhaps by a video server, then you would have auto zoom turned off. In this situation, we have a single source from a media player going through a HDMI or DVI splitter, so we need auto zoom on. By turning auto zoom on, the scaler is told to do the correct pan, zoom and tilt function automatically to grab that part of the content it needs for where it is in the picture, which saves you a lot of time manually setting pan, zoom, tilt. It also means that that setting is maintained correctly when you change between different input channels and when you change different input resolutions. That's really important because most scalers that can do any kind of blending do not allow you to track between different input signals. When you change input resolution or when you change input channel, they lose the alignment of the projectors. They have to be set up again. VP793, but also 792 and 794, are unusual and very clever because they can track their alignment between different input channels and different input resolutions when they're in the auto zoom mode. So we've set auto zoom. And the next thing we need to do now is set the blend width. This is how much we decide that we want the projectors to overlap. So we're going to set that up. So now we're going to start setting the blend widths. We've come out to the multiple unit mode menu, and what we actually need to do now is change the test patterns to test patterns which will show us the blend regions more clearly. To, to change the test pattern, the first thing we do is we actually exit the menu. You can see we have test patterns selected, so we're going to exit the menu on each scaler, and then using the up and down arrows on the scaler with the test pattern display, we can cycle through the various test patterns. We're actually pressing the buttons very cleverly on both of them simultaneously here. They're not this really is, both changing with one button press. So we're going to go to a, a particular pattern where we can see the blend regions. Here we have horizontal uh, grayscale or horizontal bars, and this allows us to see the overlap or the blend region quite clearly. So now we need to set up the blend region or the blend width. So we're going to do the left scaler first, and we're going into the multiple unit menu, and then we're going to the blend width. And you can see that we have right blend region enabled. That's the only blend region enabled because the scaler knows it is driving the left-hand projector and it's in a 2 by one configuration, so it knows only the right edge is to be blended. It will automatically enable the regions that are correct for where you've told it its projector is in the array of projectors. So now we're going to alter the blend region width. And this is based on what we've decided we want as our overlap for our, uh, for our particular screen size. So we're going to alter this to the correct amount for our configuration that we're doing now. You can either do this by trial and error or visually, or you can do it with a calculator and a piece of paper if you know what the screen size is and what the projectors are. In this particular application, the magic number in this case is 990, which is a lot of overlap. 
And the reason for that is we're taking two 16 by 10 projectors and overlapping them considerably to generate a 2.38 CinemaScope screen. The amount of overlap you have will depend on what you're actually setting up. In some cases, such as this specific case, you have a lot of overlap. In other cases, where you're building very big screens at standard aspect ratio, you'll typically have less overlap. As a rough guide, you want at least 10% overlap of the available pixels of the projector. If you have less than 10%, you're really going to find it very hard to get good alignment. Something between 10% and 20% overlap is optimal for when you're making very big pictures and for when you're doing something special, such as we are, where we're creating a custom aspect ratio, you do tend to end up with a lot more overlap. So now we have to do the same setting on the right hand scaler as well. It's quite important that you set them up so they match. If the blend widths don't match on the two projectors, you're never going to get to a position where the pictures align. So as we adjust, nothing's actually happening on screen, but as we go for the correct setting, we'll get, it, we'll get to 990, which is the magic number that we calculated is correct for the calculator of a bit of paper. Once we've selected this, and we exit the menu, you'll see the scaler draws the blend pattern on the screen, which it's now done. So the next thing we have to do now is change to a different test pattern which is more suitable for doing the warp alignment. For that purpose there is a specific warp alignment test pattern in these scalers which you can either select from the front panel or you can select from the warp generator application which is downloadable from the website. In this case we're going to select it via the menu. So what we're going to do is we're going to exit the two on-screen display menus you might remember from before, to change pattern we have to be out of the menu. So we come out of the, the on-screen menus, then we can use the up and down arrows on the front of the scaler to scroll through the different test patterns. And here we have the one with the Fs and the crosshatch is the correct one for aligning the warp and the blend. Now you might just notice here the left hand projector and sketch is showing a green alignment pattern from the scaler the right hand projector is showing a magenta pattern and where the patterns cross you see a white colour. This is quite important for the alignment. The scalers will generate different coloured alignment test patterns depending upon where they are in the array of projectors. This is so that you can easily see which scale you're adjusting visually on screen. And you can also see that when you have the alignment of the images correct with the warping then the picture will change colour when the two different coloured test patterns are correctly aligned on top of each other. 